This is a practice question in averages. Salary of graduating class is what it is. It's a beautiful question. As we solve this question, we'll learn something very, very important about how to work with numbers that are not necessarily friendly when it comes to calculation. We'll sum up this entire discussion with certain properties about averages of numbers. Let's get started with this question. The average salary of a graduating class of 30 students is $8420 and that of another class comprising 20 students is $8438 per month. What we need to find out is the average monthly salary of students of the two classes taken together. Conceptually, this is a very simple question. All that we are expected to find out is the weighted average of these two salaries. We'll use the standard framework to crack this. Let's set up the standard framework. First class, number of students 30, their average salary is equal to 8420. So sum of their salaries is equal to number into average, which is 30 into 8420. Class 2, number of students is 20. Average salary is equal to 8438. So sum of the salaries of students of class 2 is equal to 20 into 8438, their average. The weighted average or the average of the salaries of the two classes taken together, total number of students is 30 plus 20, which is equal to 50. Sum of their salaries is sum of these two numbers. So we add these two values divided by 50, we'll have the average. Can we do it? Yes, we certainly can do it. The only thing is this is a stumbling block in terms of the kind of numbers that we'll be working to do the calculation. Is it impossible? Certainly not. But we'll look at an alternative approach to make this entire calculations look friendly. Let's look at that in the next slide. This is the calculation that we have to do. I'm going to break these numbers and write it a little differently. 30 into 8420, I'm going to write it as is. Plus 20 into the 8438, I'm planning to split it as an 8420 plus an 18 divided by 50. So the initial calculation that we'll have to do still holds good here. Let's expand the right hand side term in the numerator. This will be a 20 into 8420 plus 20 into an 18. So this is 30 into 8420 plus 20 into 8420 plus 20 into 18, I'll do that calculation right away, which is equal to 360 divided by 50. Sum of these two numbers, 30 into something plus 20 into something is going to be 50 into that thing. So this is, the sum is going to be equal to 50 into 8420 plus 360 divided by 50. This part of the calculation is now very easy. 50 into 8420 by 50 will leave us with an 8420. 360 by 50, 350 by 50 is a 7. We left with the 10. 10 by 50 is a 1 by 5, which is a 0.2. So the answer is a 7.2. So the average is equal to 8427.2. So this was far easier than computing this value 30 into 8420 plus a 20 into 8438 and then dividing it by a 50. Quickly see this entire thing in a printed form. We basically split this 8438 into 8420 plus 18. Now what we'll do is we'll expand this and write it as 20 into 8420 plus 20 into 18. This part, this entire thing in blue becomes 50 into 8420. That divided by 50 is an 8420. 20 into 18 is a 360 by 50, which is a 7.2. So the final average is 8427.2. Is this the only way of going about it? Or do we have something better? The same can be achieved without actually writing all of these things. How are we going to do it? What we'll do is we'll subtract the smaller number. In this case, 8420 is smaller of these two averages from both the numbers and then compute the weighted average using the standard framework. Finally, after having got that intermediate weighted average, we'll add this 8420 to it to get the final answer. Let's do it in the next slide and check out what it results in. First class, 30 students. Average is 8420. That's a lower of these two numbers that we have. I'm subtracting that 8420 from it to result in a zero. Looks a little absurd, but let's go with it. So sum is equal to 30 into average. Average is zero. So 30 into zero is equal to zero. Class two, there are 20 students. I'm subtracting 8420 from 8438. So the average works out to 18. Their sum is equal to number into average, which is 20 into 18, which is equal to 360. Total of 50 students in two classes taken together. Their salary, sum total of their salaries right now is 30, 0 plus 360, which is equal to 360. What is going to be the intermediate average? This 360 divided by 50, which we know is equal to 7.2. We computed it in the last slide. 
the final averages, we're going to be adding this 8420 to the 7.2. That is equal to 8420 plus 7.2, which is equal to 8427.2. See it in the printed form. So we subtracted 8420 to get the sum of the first class salary to be equal to zero. Second class, the sum is equal to 360. So sum of the salaries of both the classes taken together is 360 divided by 50, which is equal to 7.2. Intermediate average is 7.2. Add back whatever you subtracted to get the average, which is equal to 8427.2. We'll summarize this entire finding with two inferences and an example to go with it. Let's look at set S, yes, which has got the five elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The average of these five numbers is 1 plus 2 is a 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, 10 plus 5 is 15, 15 by 5 is equal to 3. Take this result right now, we'll prove why it is working in a subsequent video when we are looking at arithmetic progression. If numbers are in an AP, in this case they are in an AP because the common difference is equal to 1. The middle number is going to be the average, so 3 will be the average. We can spot arithmetic sequences in your question go straight to the middle number and get to the answer. Don't waste time computing the average by finding the sum. So in this case, the average is equal to 3. I'm going to make a change to each element of the set. I'm going to add 5 to each element of the set to get a new set called T. So if we add 5 to this, it's going to become 6. 5 to this, it's going to become a 7, 8, 9, 10. These 5 numbers are also in an AP, so the middle number is the average. So in this case, the average of set T is equal to 8. Average of set S was a 3. Average of set T is an 8. How did we achieve arrive at the set T? We got each term of set T by adding 5 to each element in set S. If you add each element of a set by a K, the average will go up by the same K. That is inference number 1. We we'll read it again. If a constant K is added, you can even subtract because adding a negative number is subtracting. If a constant K is added or subtracted to each term of a data set, the average will also correspondingly increase or decrease by the same value k. Didn't you realize the same thing in the previous question? We subtracted 8420 from everyone's salary, computed an average. So the average went down by 8420. And subsequently, what did we do? We added that 8420 back. It's as good as adding 8420 back to each one's salary. That is why the last question, the last method worked the way it worked. Will it work for multiplication and division the way it worked for addition and subtraction? Let's just check it out. Don't take my word for it. I'm going to form a new set U. This set, I'm going to get this set by multiplying 2 to each element of the set. So set U is going to comprise 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. These terms are also in an AP, now with a common difference of 2. The middle term 6 is the average. Average for set S is 3. Average for set U is twice that, which is 6. Each element of set U was obtained by multiplying 2 to the element of to each element of set S. So if you multiply or divide each element of a set by a k, the average also correspondingly becomes either k times or 1 by k times the original. Quickly these two inferences again, if I add or subtract a k, the average also goes up by a k or comes down by a k, provided I do this to each element of the set. Similarly, if I multiply or divide each element of a set by a k, the average also gets impacted by the same way. The average is getting multiplied by a k or it will get divided by a k. What else can you do to prepare for the test? Good question. You can always start by subscribing to this channel and signing up for the most comprehensive and affordable GMAT quant course that's available online at gmat.vizaco.com.